Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. Lane Kincaid is the latest pop star that all the young girls are going gaga over. There's roughly 21,840 of them gathered outside his hotel right now. Naturally, they're not allowed within half a mile of him, which is about how tall that hotel is. Up there at the edge of the atmosphere, Lane himself is bored out of his mind. He's not allowed to do anything or go anywhere, and his agent is on the phone screaming at someone about money. Welcome to the glamorous life of a pop star. He goes into a room by himself, puts on some headphones, and sits down with a magazine. Into this scene walks the focus of our story today, Whitney. She is one resourceful girl. Get used to that expression. As I said, she's resourceful and that's her I have a great idea face. She's going to help that lady carry her groceries into the building, which gets her past door security because it looks like she's a kid helping mom. While she's making her way in the front entrance, some guys are bringing a big box to the service entrance. Hey, easy with that. He's not a piece of furniture, you know. That kid in there is worth two million bucks. Are you curious yet? Whitney's making her way past a security guard. She's been taking lessons from the Joker. As a security guard, his job is to sit there and watch things happen. Moving a muscle to keep them from doing that isn't in his job description. Whitney has made it to the roof. When she grew up, she changed her name, moved to Gotham City, and became a professional burglar. All right, hold it! Lane, lock the door! Time to go for a little ride. Come on. Where are you taking me? To your just reward. Let's go. After the opening credits with the new updated theme, we see Diana finishing up a meeting with a man who just helped them on a case. Daddy, you haven't done anything you promised me you would. The least you could do is drop your name and make the police do something. This is my daughter, Whitney. Uh, Whitney, Diana Prince. Hi, Whitney. The government agent. I never told you that. I pick things up. Yes, she does, Daddy, and you would do well to pay attention. Your daughter's a frickin' genius. Of course, he doesn't believe her story about Lane Kincaid. He dismisses it all and convinces Diana to do the same. You'd think Diana would know better by the third season. Uh, I wish I could stay, Whitney, but I do have to pack. Say goodbye to Miss Prince, Whitney. Goodbye, Whitney. Goodbye. I want to tell you again that I'm very grateful for everything you did in any time. But there's anything that we can well, do to help. Mr. Springfield. You can't say I didn't warn you. What's she up to now? Lane has been taken to your just reward. No, they didn't kill him. It's the name of a yacht. So, this is Mr. Lane Kincaid, whom millions of young persons admire and adore. What a pleasure. And you are... I wish I could say the same, but I can't. Well, that's quite all right. After all, you have been kidnapped. Your life is in my hands. And you are... In other words, you'd better keep me alive, well, and happy. Because if you don't, you don't get a cent, correct? I don't think they saw that coming. 
He messes with them a little and demands a nice medium rare steak. Mr. Flunky, I mean Morley, goes off to fill the order. Mr. Kincaid, don't you ever sit down in my presence without being asked. Who are you? What makes you so important besides owning this floating monument to greed? Don't expect to find out anytime soon. For now, I'll call him Mr. Richlaus. Hi, Miss Prince. Hi. Whitney, Whitney Springfield. We just met. Yes, I know. I found out from my dad's secretary where you were staying. Respect the kid's intelligence, Diana. Listen to her. The Brownfield Towers on Odeo Drive. No, LAX. I, uh, I have to get to the airport, Whitney, not Beverly Hills. Uh, you heard what I said, Cabby. Remember what I told you before? Rodeo Drive it is. <laughs> Pay attention, Diana. This is not some flaky child. If she hasn't already proven that to you, you're way off your game today. Happily, Whitney is also very persuasive. Please, Diana, you've got to help me. Lane's been kidnapped. He really has. Now, there's no way somebody that famous could be kidnapped without anybody knowing about it. I snuck up there to get his autograph, and I saw a man with a mask and a gun make Lane leave with him. If he was kidnapped, even the police couldn't keep it quiet with him. Oh, come on, Diana. You know better than that. You've been in on missions to do just that sort of thing. What makes you think it can't happen outside the spy world? Maybe they don't know about it. Please, Diana, find out for sure. You're a spy, you can find out anything. Give this kid ten more minutes and she'll figure out that Diana's Wonder Woman. Please, I can pay for any trouble I cause you. I get a heck of an allowance. I know, you tip 30%. Speaking of tips, Lane's manager, Mr. Ripley, got the call. Two million dollars. That's a tad more than 30% of a lot of things. The cab drops Diana at Lane's hotel. Rather than brave the gauntlet of teeny boppers, she slips around to the side. Now to get up there the easy way. As long as the cape doesn't get tangled in the rope and send her plunging to the ground. And now the show is going to sort of insult our intelligence. Where'd the windows go? When we shoot from the back, she's climbing between windows. When we shoot from the side, she's climbing a blank wall. After this cutaway, we'll return to the back angle and the windows will be there again. Let's talk about not trying and ways to get the new season off to a really fizzling start. I honestly do not know what to make of this. While Ripley is calling his bank to try and get the ransom money, Wonder Woman has reached Lane's Terrace. <laughs> He doesn't look very kidnapped at the moment. I saw a man with a mask and a gun make Lane leave with him. Diana reports to Whitney and Whitney is devastated. Diana won't come right out and say she doesn't believe Whitney, but that's what it boils down to. Whitney isn't finished. You know, on the news, they said that Lane had been rehearsing all day for his concert. Why do you think they'd lie like that? More important, why didn't that occur to you? Because you didn't take her seriously. Tsk, tsk, Diana. And why would Lane be in his room when logically he would be rehearsing? Okay. It sounds suspicious enough to me to do just a little bit more checking. Okay? Okay. I know this isn't an official case, but as a trained field officer, Diana should think of things like that as a matter of course. The situation should have all her antennas quivering until she can't stand it. So far, I'm a little disappointed in her. Then again, I'm a little disappointed in Whitney, too. Neither of them has thought of the obvious. You know, you guys could have at least let me and my brother have some time to talk. It's been ten years, you know. 
He has a twin brother, hello. It hasn't dawned on Diana or Whitney to look into his family and see about such things. But then I guess that doesn't matter to you creeps, right? Kingman. Look, it wasn't Mr. Crichton's intention mm. to arrange a family reunion. He dug up your brother so he could switch places with you. Now nobody knows, nobody but your manager knows the real Lane Kincaid's been kidnapped, you got that? And it doesn't even matter if his brother is musical or not because he can lip sync the concert with a little practice. At least that's the plan. I guess your Mr. Crockton must think he's hot stuff. That's Crichton. 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 At least we know one of his names now. If I had a name that was that hard to pronounce, I think I'd change it, but that's his problem. Lane can't help tormenting the riffraff. Right now, I'd love to have a BLT on white, extra mayo, lettuce, corn chips, um, and a root beer. Seeing the game's over anyway. Morley doesn't like it, but he doesn't dare retaliate, and Lane is having a ball with it. Back at the hotel, Ripley isn't having as much fun. Now you, you've got an interview in a half hour. You're kidding. Nah, some creep from the Tribune didn't buy our rehearsal story. Now listen, not one word about what's happened. Because the same guys who brought you in, in that furniture box, they could just as easily take you out in a coffin. You understand that? But they promised me that if I did as they said, they wouldn't hurt me or Melvin. Melvin, eh? Seems like Lane Kincaid has lots of secrets. Melvin? Who's Melvin? Lane, sir. His real name's Melvin. Mine's Michael. I don't care if your name's a Punch and Judy and you were separated at the age of nine when the Alaskan pipeline blew and washed away your igloo. At the age of five, sir, when our foster parents... I don't care. And we can fill in the blanks from there. Separated while in the foster system, not an uncommon story. It would take a lot of digging to come up with a twin brother if Lane, or Melvin if you prefer, didn't tell you he had one. That'd be why it's so easy to keep this quiet with Michael in his place. The records are buried deep in a file cabinet somewhere in a dusty room that nobody uses anymore. Diana calls Steve in Washington to have him start digging into Lane Kincaid to see how this might be accomplished. Steve has a surprise for her. Steve? Try again. Ira? Affirmative. Yeah, the patch cable between Ira and the phone company was completed yesterday. You are the first to benefit from its installation. Well, imagine my delight. She poses her question to both of them. Kidnapping without a missing victim for 100. Go. The name Raleigh Crichton is associated with a dozen rumored kidnappings in which the victim was replaced by a double. Oh, yeah. He and I have crossed paths before. Crichton supposedly arranges it so that only those closest to the victim know there's even been a kidnapping. That way it makes it easier for them to pay the ransom without contacting the police or the FBI. And his first name is Raleigh. No wonder he's so evil. His parents hated him. Ira reasons that since there's a concert tonight, Ripley will probably make the drop soon to get Lane back in time for it. So Diana will follow him. She tells him to a wrecking yard, and she's rather obvious about it. Mr. Ripley, uh, I know that Lane has been kidnapped. I'm here to help. Mind your own business, lady. That's how you can help. Who are you? That doesn't really matter. Listen, you can't let them get away with this. And what I can't do is blow a concert worth a million bucks, and you're not going to make me. Diana isn't paying a lot of attention to her tradecraft today. If she'd done just a little research, she would have known that this is the kind of person he is, and she would have done this on the sly. For some reason, she's just barging into things totally clueless today, and it's biting her in the butt. He locks her in an outhouse. But Crichton's men don't like what they're seeing. You did it, Mr. Ripley. The deal's off. No! Wonder Woman leaps over to the entrance and prepares to stop the car. Help! Help! Over here! Over here! Somebody kill me! She has a fair idea what he's doing, but she can't take the chance. Sorry, Wonder Woman. You're interfering in my business. Now, look, uh, you know, this is no concern of yours or anybody else's. Don't bother with that, huh? I mean, because uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Because those phone calls from the kidnappers, they were uh, either long distance or uh, a ship to shore, you know? And I, mean, I don't even know who they were. And uh, when you take that off, well, I'm just going to deny there was a kidnapping. Put the lasso on yourself and tell him what you think of him. Or put it on me and I'll do it for you. After all we've done to make it easy for him to pay the ransom, that fool involved Wonder Woman. 
Well, boss, we don't know for sure. I mean, Ripley was just as surprised as we were when she showed. Well, I suppose it's only fair to hear both sides of the story. It's nice to know he's a reasonable kidnapper and murderer. He calls Ripley and says, okay, Wonder Woman showing up was a fluke. But as a result, you're not getting Lane back in time for the concert. You'll have to put Michael on. So his manager refuses to report it. Now, if we go and make a big fuss about it, well, we might be putting Lane in even more danger. He's in danger, all right. I thought the men who took him were going to kill him. Why do you say that? Well, something the guy in the mask said. How come they haven't canceled tonight's concert? That is a very good question. I don't suppose you have an extra ticket. Of course she does. This kid's ready for anything. Actually, it was supposed to be for the housekeeper, but now it's Diana's. Michael plays some guitar and sings, but he doesn't know any of his brother's songs. Ripley says between now and the concert, you're going to learn them and then lip sync them. He looks just like him. Do you suppose we're wrong? Do you suppose that's Lane after all? We'll know as soon as he starts to sing. Should have given him more time. He knows those words about as well as he knows how to talk backwards and cling on. So here's what I do. And he's faking it. The crowd starts getting ugly. Ripley has gathered up all the advance money they were paid and he's skipping town. Finally, Michael says, enough. This isn't me. Here's what I really like to do. When I think of you, I think of sunny days and June, warm nights and June with the sun in your heart. He's not a rocker. He's not a pop star. He's a crooner and a very good one. This music is different, but it's good. It's really good. But this is not a good thing, at least not for Lane. He just became expendable. One of the henchmen calls Crichton and tells him the situation. He says, I have some thinking to do. Lane Kincaid is, at this very moment, giving the finest performance of his career. Huh? Lane's twin brother, apparently, is just as talented as Lane himself. Well, let's hear it from Michael. I guess he fixed your wagon, huh, Crockton? Lane reminds me of Sergeant Schultz. He doesn't know how to read the room, so he doesn't know when to shut up. I'd worry about your wagon if I were you, Mr. Kincaid, for you suddenly have become about as useful to us as a dead duck. You think he understands now? Ripley is still concerned about Lane. What's he waiting for? He must have heard our kid went over big. Yeah, sure he went over big. But he's not Lane. It'll take years to get him to that place. I want Lane back. I want Lane and Michael. There's nothing wrong with that, huh? I mean, I'm going to pay. Correction, Ripley is still concerned for what he can get out of Lane. It was wrong of me to imply that Ripley cares about anyone besides himself. Maybe the kidnapper figures you got nothing to lose now. Maybe he thinks you'll try a double cross if he tries to return Lane. Oh, come on, he's got to return Lane. What else is he going to do with him? No, he wouldn't. Why wouldn't he? This guy is just like you. He doesn't see people. He sees commodities to be exploited. When a commodity like Lane is no longer valuable, out it goes. He tries to call the police and tell them the story, as if they'll believe him after that concert. He remembers the woman in the junkyard who knew about the kidnapping, but has no idea who she was or how to contact her. Meanwhile, something Whitney said has triggered an idea in Diana. Think. Okay, he must have said something. Something that made you think they were going to kill him. It's more urgent now because with Michael being such a hit, the real Lane is scheduled to become part of a crushed car later that night. Lane said something like, where are we going? And the man said something like, to get what you deserve, to, to get your reward, your just reward. That's it. He said, I'm taking you to your just reward. Diana puts it together. His manager said that the phone call sounded long distance, ship to shore. Your just reward. Too bad Whitney didn't hear that part before. She'd have sorted it out by now. A call to the Coast Guard confirms their suspicions. A hint at Diana's credentials gets the Coast Guard busy looking for it. Crichton and his men are taking Lane for what should be the last ride of his life. As they're getting in a car, a police helicopter spots them and reports. What's happening? They've got Lane in a car headed away from the ocean, and the police are after them. Well, let's get going. 
We're not doing any good here. Maybe there'll be a shoot. You are going home, young lady. Oh, come on, Diana. She broke this whole thing open when nobody believed her. And you think you're going to send her home to miss the payoff? Even when she agrees to go home, do you really think that's where she's going? Anytime she pulls that expression, I want to make sure she's on my side. A police car starts following Crichton, but they lose him. Diana gets the bad news and starts thinking, suddenly remembering the junkyard. You expected what? She says, go over to that store, call the police, and tell them to get to that junkyard. Then promise me you'll stay put. Whitney grudgingly agrees. When she's gone, Diana spots a motorcycle nearby. Get it over with. <laughs> Everything I said about this last season, yeah, that. Let me show you something. Wow, you are one cruel piece of He's doing this to a 15-year-old kid. <laughs> now it's Lane's turn. See what that kid did right there, dude? That's called class. It's something you'll never have. In the epilogue, we're backstage waiting for Lane and Michael to go on together. Whitney is finally getting that autograph. Well, I don't know about you, but this girl saved my life. She deserves more than an autograph. And if it weren't for her, we'd never be together again. Hey, Lane, Michael, let's go. I may as well die now, Diana. What? I have nothing left to live for. <laughs> well, uh, how about a hot fudge sundae after the show? With peanuts? The works. You're on. Sometimes things go on in Hollywood that can seem a little creepy. I enjoyed this episode immensely, and that girl who played Whitney can act. Unfortunately for us, this was the last acting job she did. She grew up on TV, and when she was 15, she quit acting and branched out into several other ventures. She's had quite an interesting life. But here, she's the love-struck early teen who moons over the pop star idol, and when he kisses her cheek, her life is complete. And how hard was it for her to say those things about her real-life brother? Yes, Don Lynn, who played Whitney, and Leif Garrett, who played Lane and Michael, are brother and sister. How weird was that? I'd love to ask him someday. We're off to a good start. We had good acting, a good story, good pacing, really good balance between Diana and Wonder Woman. It promises an enjoyable season. There's just one thing I'm wondering about. Now that Diana can talk directly to Ira by phone, what do we need Steve for? I'm Irving, and you are now exiting Cartertopia.